Hey guys, Chris here. In this video, we are doing the motorway range test in the BYD Tang Electric. Today, we're gonna to find out just how far this large seven seat electric SUV can go on the motorway at motorway speeds. We're also gonna see how close it gets to its WLTP rated range from around 400 kilometers. And guys, this is a huge car. It's almost the size of a Volvo XC90. It's very square, not very aerodynamic, and also on 22 inch wheels. And then on top of that, it is very cold outside. It's about one degree Celsius now, but as the day progresses, we're lucky if we hit like six or seven degrees Celsius. So we're in a very cold period in the middle of October now. So I'm not expecting the best results of this car, but this is a very exciting car that I have for the whole week of testing. There's gonna be all the usual videos, the reviews, the Norwegian high speed run, the charging test. So if you aren't subscribed already, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below, sound that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the upcoming videos on this, the BYD Tang Electric. And as per usual, we're starting here at the BKK Bielkraft Charters at Chesmo Centre. We're going north to the Mills Tower and then back again, 233 kilometers on mostly motorways with 110 kilometer an hour speed limits. That's about 70 miles per hour. And also, as per usual, BKK Beatcraft are the sponsor of this video. They are one of the largest providers of fast and lightning or rapid charging here in Norway. So if you wanna download their app, they have an awesome app that actually shows you the charging speed, the charging curve, how much juice that has been pumped into the battery, and also the cost. It's one of the best charging apps out there. There will be a link in the description box down below to both Android and to iPhone. We are now Oscar Mike and what a beautiful day guys and look how calm the Mesa is according to the wind map we have a headwind of about a meter per second but it looks to be I mean completely calm I don't think we have any wind at all out today you know maybe the wind map doesn't show zero meters per second because it really looks close to zero meters per second and guys as you can hear there is a bit of road noise on this part of the E6. Yes, in, in the actual lane, in the tracks here, the asphalt is a bit coarse. Let's move over to the left lane here, just to here. Yeah, that is much better. So we have tire roar, roar. So not the best sound insulation, you know, when it comes to tire noise. I mean, it's totally fine, but there are cars quieter in this class and at this price point but this is also on 22 inch wheels they are huge but okay guys we started at 95 percent battery we are now down to 71 percent and outside temperature has now climbed to four degrees celsius so it is very very cold and this car doesn't actually have an average readout that you can reset but if we go here we should have the past 50 kilometers we've done maybe like hmm, we've done like 70 kilometers now Again, I wasn't able to reset the trip computer. Some of the controls and menus here are a bit confusing. And bear in mind, guys, this is a pre-production car. So this is not the actual final product. This isn't a finished product yet. So when they start delivering these to customers here in Norway in a few weeks, hopefully things should be improved. But just keep that in mind, guys. But okay, average consumption does for 31.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So based on you know uh, the battery percentage usage the battery size which is 86.4 kilowatt hours gross or net net i think that's the net capacity we're, we're going to have to calculate the actual uh, consumption uh, when we get back to our starting point but thus far yeah 31.5 that seems to be a little bit high but again this is a large suv it is cold outside it's on big wheels so i'm not expecting too much about uh, you know too much uh, considering the consumption of this car I'm not expecting it to have a low consumption at all I'm actually actually expecting this to have the highest consumption of any car we have tested we're now approaching our turnaround point which is right here by the beautiful Mios Tower or Mios Torna you guys who have been watching my videos for a while know about this building which is the tallest wooden building in the world not the tallest wooden structure tallest man-made wooden building 86 point something meters tall and it's actually a hotel and remember guys when we hit 30,000 subscribers which should happen in a few thousand subscribers hopefully in maybe uh less than a month i'm going to stay at this hotel here because 
Yeah, this is a place we visit all the time on these tests, or we actually pass here. But I'm going to stay here and do a vlog and show you guys the actual Mirrors Tower. So hit that subscribe button down below. And also another reason to hit that subscribe button is that I'm also giving away a Saptec Go home charger worth 700 euros to a lucky subscriber once we hit that 30,000 mark. So yeah, a lot of reason to subscribe to the channel. Also, the last thing is because there, this is uh, good content. I think so myself. I hope you guys are enjoying the content uh, because, yeah, it takes a lot of time to make. These tests do take a few hours, but also, you know, having this beautiful weather, driving now on a day like this, it's totally worth it. But okay, guys, let's take a look at the actual average consumption now, uh, the past 50 kilometers, 31.0 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. And again, guys, this screen is a little bit dim. So I don't know if you guys can see that properly, but it says 31.0 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. We're at 54% state of charge. So that means we've used, is that 40, no, that's 40, yeah, 41% battery. That's not too bad. But uh, we'll have to see what the final score is when we get back to our starting point. So now we're heading southward. We should, according to the wind map, now have a tailwind of about one meter per second. So hopefully, maybe if we're lucky, the consumption will drop to just below 30 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. But that is insanely high, guys. Remember when we did the run with the Tesla Model Y last week? That's videos on the channel. Uh, I think we ended at just below 20 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So this car has 50% higher consumption. That is insane. Exit 45. This is where we are leaving the E6 motorway. And uh, yeah, weather's still pretty nice. And from our timer down here, it looks like uh, we're gonna do this trip in about two hours and four minutes, which is close to the Tesla Model Y and also the Hyundai Ionic 5, which also did this uh, test in, yeah. We're gonna round it up now to two hours and five minutes when we hit the roundabout just about here. When we stop, I'm going to stop the timer like that. And then we're going to cross over here and I'm going to have to remember 1106.8, 1106.8, because that will be our um, uh, distance that we have traveled. Because we're going to have to use all of these numbers to figure out the actual, yeah, this turn here is a little bit tight, to find out the actual uh, consumption, the actual distance, and, and all of that. So hopefully some of the charters up here are vacant. And uh, yeah, they are all vacant. So we're gonna stop here, connect to the charter, see what kind of speed we actually do get after a few hours on the road. You know, will we get that peak speed? This car has been peaking at around 116 uh, kilowatts is the actual charging peak. And it does that up to like almost 70%, guys. And also I want to dip this mirror. Why isn't this dipping? Yeah, you can see we're pretty close to the curb over here. Not, and I was dipping up, that's a bit annoying. Why did you do that? Let's hop out now. And yeah, Ooh, the sun's popped out. So it's getting a little bit milder in the air, but still it's like five degrees. That's why I'm wearing my, yeah, my big jacket today my down jacket that yeah i usually use a little bit later in the year when it is close colder closer colder okay so we have the charge port here on the rear left side and this charger is called sk13 so we're going to activate that there and what we're going to do is that we're going to hop into the car because this car does have a kilowatt readout that is pretty pretty nice uh, before we do that, we're going to just take, check out how uh, long time it takes before the car is initializing. That's always very interesting to see, you know, how long does it take before it actually starts. There we can hear a click from the charging port. Hearing more clicks, so hopefully we should be charging any second now. Yeah, let's just, yeah, there we go, there we go guys, now we're charging. So I've been charging this car for a few times now already, 
And initially we start at a very low speed. We're gonna hop in guys because there is a little bit of noise here. So let's go in the car. This car does have a kilowatt readout in the display and that is very, very nice. But the display is a little bit dim. But as you guys can see here, uh, it does take a little bit time before it starts charging at any speed at all. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna pick this up when we actually start charging uh, quicker. We've been charging now for a little bit more than five minutes. And as you guys can see from the display up here, now we are charging at a decent speed. So it does take around five minutes for this thing to pick up speed. So for the first, you know, four and a half minutes or something, it's only charging at like less than 10 kilowatts. So I don't know why it's like that. Maybe it's preheating the battery, preconditioning the battery before it actually can, you know, put some, um, amps into the into the battery or just takes time to you know to uh, get the voltage up to uh, 400 volts I don't know what it is if you guys are familiar with this and know what the answer may be drop a comment down below because this is pretty pretty interesting but okay it's nice to know that even though it is cold outside after a few hours driving on the road we are getting you know that uh, 100 kilowatt of charging speed and you know, if we just keep following this uh, up until the uh, the percentage starts climbing, we should hit that peak of 116 kilowatts. But we're not going to do that now because I'm going to film the 10 to 80 percent charging test a little bit later today. So I don't want to charge the battery too much. So that video will be out tomorrow, guys. If you're interested in the charging curve, the charging time, and the actual charging speed from 10 to 80 percent. Before we end today's video, let's take a look at the battery size and then take a look at how many percent we use today, calculate the actual consumption since this car doesn't have a consumption readout for the trip, and also calculate the theoretical range. And these numbers have to be taken with a grain of salt. These are just estimations based on some, you know, standard numbers and calculations I do. And also BYD tank doesn't tell us if the battery pack of this car, which is 86.4 kilowatt hours is net or gross. But I, I'm guessing it is net capacity, just like the Koreans, which only give the net battery capacity. So that's our assumption today. So we're going to have to do some calculations here. Uh, the distance here is 233 kilometers. And when we, you know, calculate the how many percent we have used and uh, based on the battery size, uh, pull out some heat loss, we get a, an average consumption of 30.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. And considering the size of this car, again, almost the size of, as a Volvo XC90, it's a huge box with seven seats, high ground clearance, 22 inch wheels. The weather today, though very nice and dry with no wind, was cold between one and four degrees Celsius. So considering all of that, I don't think the consumption is too bad. But again, it's also very hard <laughs> comparing this to, well, take the Tesla Model Y we tested last week, which got an average consumption, yes, almost the same temperature as today, but of less than 20 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer. So this has 50% higher consumption, but it is also a lot more car. Yes, you can get the Model Y as a seven seater, but it's not close to being this in size. This is a huge car with a huge cabin. You sit high up, you have that proper SUV driving position. And again, this feels very much like the Volvo XC90s I've had. So if we take the battery capacity again, and then we, you know, base it on today's consumption, we get a theoretical range of 278.5 kilometers, which isn't too shabby actually look at the chart down below that should be a little bit better than the hyundai ionic 5 or around the hyundai ionic 5 um range and today's conditions yeah around the same temperature so that is not too bad and also considering the percentage of wltp which is the real measure i like to 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 get out of this it's almost 70 percent of wltp with today's conditions and temperature that is not bad at all yes high consumption but everything has to be looked at in relevance and relative to well the the other cars here on the list yes the tesla model y most efficient here but again this is a very very 
different vehicle. I know I'm mentioning that because there will be comments like the Tesla Model Y is still the most efficient SUV on the market. Yes, it is still, but this is bigger than a Tesla Model X, so you really can't compare the two. So I'm pretty impressed that this car, even though very high consumption, that the actual real world motorway range is closer to 300 kilometers. I was not expecting that today. So guys, let me know what you think down below. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please drop me a thumbs up down below. And for more car content, as always guys, please subscribe. See you guys soon and goodbye.